Hello everyone, this is JC De Guzman for our daily top 5 gainers and top 5 losers analysis for August 23, 2019 in preparation for the next trading day on Tuesday. As you may already know, we have no trading on Monday due to a holiday. I'm going to give you my technical analysis using my proprietary methods in doing this a technical analysis. And of course, I'm going to give you my recommendations. I'd like to remind you that if any of these 10 stocks begin at a price lower or higher than the dominant range that you're about to see, please post a request for that particular stock's latest trade and volume distribution and true market sentiment charts in our private clients forum. Of course, you should only do that if you are interested in trading the name. Another reminder is that this video is for short-term trading purposes only. If you're looking some, for some pieces of advice for long-term investing purposes, please refer to our investors tab on your account or go to the forum and check those threads within the long-term investing section. So please keep those reminders in mind. And lastly, whenever you are about to enter a new position in a particular stock, do not forget that there's an extra process that you must go through and that is the calculation of your reward to risk ratio. Even if the 10 SMACD combo is valid, even if the momentum power indicator is bullish, if you are not satisfied with your reward to risk ratio, it doesn't make sense entering a new position or doing a test buy. Okay, please keep those three reminders in mind. Let's begin with the first in our list, KPPI. KPPI closed on uh, Friday at 15 pesos per share. The support that, I, that I'm seeing is... Uh, around 12.32 in confluence with the 38.2% retracement of the up Fibonacci. Resistance is at 23 pesos per share. Now let's uh, check. Just in case it uh, goes up again and breaks above 23 pesos per share, before it, before it breaks above 23 pesos per share, it has to break above 16.4, then 19.3, then 23 pesos. Now if it breaks above those three three resistance levels the next resistance will then be 33.7 but there's a lot of resistance levels that kppi must break for us to talk about that higher resistance point at this at this time so there you go we're not going to talk about the uh, 10 smack the combo because that's not applicable in this case it goes without saying that kppi has only been trading the market for four trading days so any oscillator that needs historical data more than 10 trading days, we're not going to talk about them. That's why we're not going to talk about the MACD, RSI, historical volatility, and DMI. But in this case, we can talk about the momentum power indicator with, uh, uh, except for the, the, the height of the volume in relation to the uh, volume average for the past 10 trading days. So we're going to width out. We're going to remove that element of our momentum power indicator. So we will only consider three parameters, color of the candlestick, its position above the VWAP, what else? The dominant range, okay? So let's take a look at the trade and volume distribution chart. VWAP is at 20.58. So the dominant range of uh, KPPI last Friday was between 20 pesos to 21 pesos per share. We can say, yeah, 20 to 21. That's uh, closer to the intraday high than the intraday low. But since we got a red candlestick, I would say that the, the momentum power indicator was bearish on Friday. Okay. Now, the true market sentiment or the mood of the top 10 brokers last pri Friday was bearish. And that makes my overall sentiment for KPPI bearish also. So I would suggest that you respect your trailing stop loss. And by the looks of this price action last Friday, your trailing stop loss should have already been hit. Now, now don't enter a new position yet. There are no signs of, we got no buy signals. So let's wait for those three parameters of our momentum power indicator to become bullish again. At this point, be in a wait and see mode on KPPI. Okay, next we got PPG. This stock closed on Friday at 7.84. Support The support that I'm seeing is at 7.74, which is in confluence with a 61.8% of the up 
retracement of the up Fibonacci to be precise. Resistance is at 10.7. Now the 10 smack D combo is, is still valid. It's still valid because the last price is still moving above the 10 day simple moving average. RSI is uh, uh, pointing towards to the bottom. It's still uh, in the neutral territory. Historical volatility is giving PPG an extremely high risk level. Now the positive DMI is still hovering the negative uh, DMI, but I, I don't think that uh, this is already a, this is still a signal for a strong upward momentum. It's no longer that case. I think so. Now let's take a look at the uh, trade and volume distribution chart of PPG. So last Friday the dominant range was between 10 to 10. Point Eight or 10 to 11 pesos per share 10 to 11 pesos per share that's closer to the intraday high than the intraday low now looking at the mood of the top 10 brokers they were bearish last Friday they were not interested in buying the dips so I based on that observation I would say that profit taking was the dominant uh, mood last Friday so now, uh, for me, that means my overall sentiment is no longer bullish on PPG. At this point, I would say that you should respect your trailing stop loss as well. If it has not been hit yet, don't top up. Don't average down. There's no logical reason for me to do that. Now, if you, are, if, you are, if you would like to enter a new position, I would say don't push through with that plan. Be in a wait and see mode. There are no buy signals at this point. The 10 smack the combo is valid, but... The momentum power indicator is bearish. Okay, next. We move on to RLC. RLC closed on Friday at 24.6. Okay, 24.6. The support level is using a Fibonacci. Support level is at 22.8 in confluence with the 50% of the up Fibonacci. That's a retracement. If it breaks below 22.8, 21.54 will become the next support level. Resistance is somewhere near 25.8 as a precursor to 8 to 28.10. Now the 10 smack the combo is no longer valid. RSI is uh, closer to the classical oversold level but in the, in the neutral territory. The risk level of RLC remains low. Now the uh, Negative DMI is still hovering the positive uh, DMI and ADX is above 28 points. So I would say that the downtrend momentum is still very strong in this case. Okay, now this is the dominant range of RLC. So with respect to the closing price of 24.6, I would say that the dominant range was between 24 to 24.6. Still, bulk, the bulk of it is still uh, closer to the intraday uh, high than the intraday low now unfortunately the mood of the top 10 brokers last friday was bearish they were not that interested in buying in buying uh you know that uh, green candlestick that appeared so so at this point for me this recovery last friday was wasn't enough for me to have a, a bullish overall sentiment for rlc um i would still like to be in a a watch and see mode i prefer to see the 10 smack the combo to become valid in the case of RLC, uh, you know the momentum power indicator is already bullish. So I just I just prefer uh, for the 10 smack the combo to become valid in this case for me to have the conviction to to do a test buy within the dominant range. But like what I mentioned during the Evergreen strategy trading the Philippine stock market seminar, that uh, you can skip the validation of the 10 smack the combo provided you regard yourself as an experienced and a disciplined trader and if the momentum power indicator is bullish, which is in this case. So just ask that, those two questions to yourself so you can decide uh, whether you will go or not go when it comes to doing a test buy on RLC. Okay, so there you go. After RLC, we move on to APC. It closed on Friday at 0 0.59. Support is at 0 0.48 or 0 0.49 if we will round it up. Resistance is at 0 0.63. The 10 smack the combo is valid. RSI is pointing towards toward the north toward direction, but still quite distant from the classical overbought level. The, the risk level of APC is already moderate in this case. 
the upward momentum is not yet very strong. Uh, the ADX is still below 25 points. It's a 20.44 points to be exact. Nonetheless, the positive, positive DMI is already hovering the negative DMI. I like the towering bullish volume last Friday, by the way. Now, this is the dominant range of APC. The dominant range was between 0 0.57 to 0 0.6. This makes the momentum power indicator bullish. Now, here's the mood of the top 10 brokers. They were neutral last Friday. They were neutral. So, if you have APC and your trailing stop loss has not, has not been hit yet, and if you want to top up, yeah, technically, technically speaking, we you have the data-driven signals to do so, but please keep your eyes on your trailing stop loss. Eyes on your trailing stop loss. Do not forget to do an upward adjustment whenever, whenever, whenever applicable. If you attended the Evergreen Seminar, brush up on lesson number six. Lesson number six, do not forget. Okay? All right. Now, if you are planning to enter a new position, like what I mentioned during the introduction, calculate your reward to risk ratio first. Unless and until you are satisfied with your triple R, do not do a test buy within the dominant range. Okay? But I'm bullish on APC. Next, we got PIP. It closed on Friday at 1.81. Support is at 1.55. Resistance is at 1.95. The tense MACD combo is no longer valid because the, the, the MACD is still moving below the signal line. RSI is in the neutral level. Risk level of uh, PIP is already high and it's about to go extremely high. Once it goes above 100%, it's already at 97.17%. I'm talking about the historical volatility score. The negative DMI is still hovering the positive DMI. So it's, uh, it's you know what, uh, for me, I would be interested in trading PIP once it breaks above the resistance or once it touches the support level. And when that happens, I would if the momentum power indicator is, becomes bullish, then I might do a test buy within the support level so my strategy for pip is my preferred strategy is buy near support or buy on breakout provided the tennis macd combo and the momentum power indicator are bullish or are valid or at least the momentum power indicator is bullish whenever either of those two things happen okay or happens okay so this is the dominant range this is the dominant range last friday the, the dominant range was, what was between 1.77 to 1.83. 1.77 to 1.83, but I would say that's still a lot closer. Most part of it, you know, most part of it is still registered. Yeah, considerably, it's still considered closer to the intraday high than the intraday low, but I'm not that bullish based on the uh, distribution that I see on this chart. So I would say I'm still, I would say I'm neutral. On the trade and volume distribution chart of PIP, the new the true market sentiment of the top ten brokers was also neutral, so they were not that uh, attracted that much on uh, the green candlestick last Friday. So my overall sentiment for P PIP is uh, neutral in this case. So again, I already told you a while back my preferred trading strategy for PIP. Okay, so next, you you got we got PPC. It closed on Friday at 5.10 after hitting an intraday high of 7.38. Support is at 5 pesos per share. If it breaks below 5, support will become will be at 4.67. Resistance at this point is at 5.68 as a precursor to 6.34 and 6.9. The tennis MACD combo is no longer valid. RSI is the neutral level. The risk level of PPC is, listen to this, extremely high so even if the positive dmi is still hovering the, the negative dmi and even if adx is at 34.6 point, points i'm not that bullish on this dmi chart because of this towering red candlestick and this towering red volume bar now this is the dominant range of uh, ppc with respect to its closing price of 5.10 last friday Okay, 5.10. In this case, I would say that the dominant range was between 5 to 
and not this uh, range that you see between six between six six point six to seven. So I will give the score to five to five point ten in relationship to the closing price of five point what five point uh, ten. So for me, this is as an for me this makes the momentum power indicator bearish for PPC. The true market sentiment was bearish, so they second the motion. They seconded the motion. So meaning to say they were not that interested as well in buying the dips of PPC last Friday. Okay, so my overall sentiment for PPC is bearish. Don't enter in opposition. Okay, your trailing stop loss should have already been hit based on what transpired last Friday. Now moving on to PXP. This is stock closed on Friday at 12.74. It did not manage to break above 13.6. Now the the 10 smack the combo is still valid, but the MACD line is already uh, downward sloping. The RSI is pointing uh, toward the neut neutral territory, but it's moving toward it's also uh, downward sloping. The risk level is already high for PXP. And even though the, the positive DMI is hovering the negative DMI, the, there, there's already a formation of a bearish convergence between the two lines. Okay, So it seems that uh, the resistance at 13.6 .6 is really a strong one. But let's see, trade and volume distribution chart. So here. With respect to the closing price of 12.74 last Friday, 12.74, I would say that the dominant range was between 12.5 to 13.1. That's closer to the intraday low than the intraday high. My momentum power indicator for PXP is bearish. The true market sentiment or the mood of the top 10 brokers last Friday was neutral for PXP. There was no appetite to buy at a higher price. So at this point, I would suggest that you respect your trailing stop loss. If it has not been hit yet, hold your position, but don't average down. Don't top up. And if you're planning to enter a new position, now is not the time. At least wait for the momentum power indicator to become bullish once again. Okay? Don't rush. Okay, next. Abacur. It closed on Friday at 0 0.77. 0 0.77 this the support that I'm seeing is pegged near 0 0.74 0 0.74 or 0 0.75 which is in confluence with the 38.2% retracement of the up Fibonacci if it breaks below 0 0.75 we're eyeing at 0 0.67 as the next support level which is in confluence with the 23.6% retracement of the up Fibonacci Resistance is at 0 0.88, which is in confluence with the golden ratio of the Fibonacci, 61.8% retracement. Okay. Unfortunately, the tennis MACD combo is or has been in, invalid. It has been invalid since the second week of July. RSI is pointing toward the classical oversold level. It's getting closer to that level. The risk level of Abacor is already high. This is not a newbie-friendly stock. And the downward momentum is very strong as confirmed by the DMI and ADX lines. So the dominant range was between 0 0.77 to 0 0.8. A lot closer to the intraday low than the intraday high. The momentum power indicator is bearish. The mood of the top 10 brokers on Abacor last Friday was neutral. There was there are still no signs of interest. No interest, no interesting signs to buy the dips. So let them reach an exhaustion level before you consider doing a test buy. Stay away from Abacor. If you'd like to, you can add it into your watch list. But don't enter a new position unless and until at least the momentum power indicator becomes bullish once again. Okay? Alright, next. We got tech. Tech closed on Friday at 10.4. This is a bearish stock, another one. Support is at 9.86. Resistance is at 15.85. The 10 SMACD combo is uh, invalid. 
it's a perfect bearish alignment among its three simple moving averages. RSI is already playing, almost playing inside the classical oversold level. The risk level is already extremely high for tech, so it's another a non-newbie friendly stock. The downward momentum is confirmed very strong still. It's still very strong. So those are those signs are more than enough for me to you know to stay away from the idea of doing a test buy on tech. Not now. Not now. Okay. The true market sentiment of uh, tech. Uh, oh no, not true market sentiment, but the dominant range was between. Uh, 10 to 10 point 10 to 11 pesos per share so the momentum power indicator is bearish obviously for tech even the top 10 brokers were bearish on friday for tech so stay away okay so after tech we we will talk about abs the last stop for today's video abs closed on friday at 18.56 it it broke below the resistance at 19.32 or the previous support at 19.32 so it retreated therefore making 19.32 as its immediate resistance level once again or we can adjust this one this time at 20.15 or yeah 20.2 or 20.15 that's the current resistance level of abs support is at uh, 17 pesos per share and we can Put another line here as a precursor to 17 pesos per share which is at the 18 pesos okay anyhow the 10 smack the combo is invalid rsi is pointing toward the, the neutral territory it's downward sloping another bearish signal risk level is already high for abs it's, it's another non-uv friendly stock and let's see here the true market sentiment or the dominant range for ABS-CBN last Friday shows that the moment the dominant range was between with respect to the closing price. That's why I I had to check the closing price. The dominant range was between eighteen point fifty six to nineteen pesos per share. That's obviously closer to the intraday low than the intraday high. The momentum power indicator for ABS was bearish last Friday. So based on the mood of the top 10 brokers, I did not see, I, I do not see uh, an appetite to buy the dips. They were neutral last Friday. So don't enter a new position. If your trailing stop loss has not been hit yet, I suggest that you preempt your trailing stop loss. Adjust the percentage of risk applied into it. Uh, refer to your handouts for lesson number six for the Evergreen Strategy Seminar. That's where I wrote when you should reduce the percentage of risk applied in calculating your trailing stop loss whenever there are signs of a weakening upward momentum. And I have seen some signs of a weakening upward momentum in the case of ABS-CBN. So it's just right and just to adjust your trailing stop loss, the percentage of risk applied to be specific. So stay away from ABS-CBN. At least for now, the momentum power indicator is bullish, bearish in this case. So you've heard my technical analysis for these uh, 10 stocks. I'd like to remind all of those who have not attended the Evergreen Seminar. I highly recommend that you attend. That's a prerequisite part of this uh, subscription. If you just subscribe without attending that seminar, I'm telling you that you're missing a lot, a lot of the... Uh, logic behind the methodologies that we have that I have applied uh, whenever we teach you here at the Equities Analytics so you should attend and that's the very reason why we applied an automatic 50% discount on your ticket if you are a one-year subscriber so if you are a one month or a six month subscriber and you would like to upgrade your subscription to one year so you can avail of that 50% discount, you can email us at contact at contact.equilist.com and we'll give you the instructions on how to upgrade your membership. So on September 28th, I'll be in Makati, October 26th in Davao, November 23 in Cavite, January 25 in Baguio, Gen February 29 in Pampanga, and March 28 in Cebu. 
Okay, register as soon as possible. Register as early as you can. You might get a discounted ticket as well, especially the non one year subscribers. But for, again, for the one year subscribers, 50%, a 50% discount is automatic for you. Okay, again, my name is JC De Guzman. Have a profitable and a disciplined trading week ahead. Bye for now.